The NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment, Production Stagecoach, Director John Ford, Stars John Wayne, Claire Trevor, Ward Bond. This is the Screen Directors Guild production of the United Artists motion picture classic, Stagecoach. Starring John Wayne, Claire Trevor, and Ward Bond. And introducing the director of the film, John Ford. Before we begin our story, here are a few words about the entertainment you will hear tonight and in future weeks at this time. The NBC Theater is proud to welcome the president of the Screen Directors Guild and the eminent director of such films as Variety Girl, The Perils of Pauline, and Tap Roots, Mr. George Marshall. Thank you and good evening. This is the first performance of a series of Screen Directors Guild productions. <coughs> in which the directors will personally bring you their favorite film assignments, along with the stars who created the original roles. Tonight, your director is John Ford. John, if you remember, is the winner of five Academy Awards, the guiding hand behind such great pictures as The Informer, <coughs> How Green Was My Valley, and, of course, Stagecoach. You're on the set, John. Thank you, George. <clears throat> and good luck on our... First production. Stagecoach is ready to roll. The last time I made that crack was about 10 years ago. <laughs> and I first had the opportunity of putting on film this Romance of the West. For the cast, the picture offers an array of colorful character types, ripe for the actor's talents. Now the story and the cast are united again. Here is Stagecoach with John Wayne as the Ringo Kid, Claire Trevor as Dallas, and Ward Bond as Doc Boone. In 1885, the stagecoach was the only means of travel on the American frontier. And in those days, no name struck more dread into the hearts of travelers than Geronimo, leader of the warlike Apaches. This, folks, is a story of a party of people who traveled from Tonto to Lordsburg by stagecoach in 1885. It's a story still told by the Indians. In the land of Arizona, land of the Apache Indian, where the roaming Chiricahua fought the mighty white invader, stood the white man's city, Tonto. Tonto, where the flying wagon that the white man called the stagecoach stopped to take men to the westward, where Geronimo was leader, chief of the Apache Indian. Well, that's how it is, folks. Geronimo's Apaches are on the war path up ahead, burning every ranch in sight. Oh. Then the question before the party assembled in this stagecoach is, shall we continue? I say yes. Continue. But, Mrs. Mallory, should you be traveling in your condition? My husband is in Apache Wells with his troops. I want to be with him when our baby arrives. Madam, I am a gambler, and I admire and respect a bold gamble. But aren't you gambling with a life besides your own? Oh, I forgot to tell you, Mr. Hatfield. We're getting a cavalry escort for Apache Wells. That settles it. I'm going on. 
Count me in, of course, Buck. All right. I'll go find my shotgun guard. You don't have to go no further, Buck. What? Curly! Well, <laughs> doggone! Now, how are you, Sheriff? Fine, thanks, and I'll be riding shotgun up next to you this trip, Buck. You? What for? The Ringo kid escaped from prison. I'm looking for him. The fellow who shot Jed Michael dead? I hear he's heading for Lordsburg to shoot it out with the three plumber boys. So I'll be right up there next to you, Buck, all the way to Lordsburg. <laughs> Coach, better stand back a bit, Doc. Yeah, stand, stand out of the road there, Dallas girl. Thanks, Doc. Hail the stagebrush chariot. Doc, Doc, why do I have to leave town? Because, because all these women here say I have to. I don't want to go to Lordsburg. No more do I, Dallas. But you are a lady somewhat too hospitable to gentlemen. And I am a doctor somewhat too hospitable to spirits. We girl are the dregs of Tonto. They send us from their midst. Come, Dallas, be a glorified dreg like me. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. Hi there, Buck. You have acquired two more eager passengers. The engines are rising, Doc. I thank them for that mark of respect. <laughs> Tell them they may be seated now. Enter, Dallas. Thanks, Tom. Take your place beside the other lady. Then forward. On to Lordsburg! What you driving through this canyon, Buck? Well, I aim to be hard to shoot at in case Geronimo's Apaches are in these hills. I'm with you, Buck. The law. Well, that don't make me bullet, too. <laughs> Kingdom high, here she comes, Apaches! Keep your shirt on and stop the coach. It ain't Apaches. There's someone up ahead blocking the road with a rifle. Ho, ho, ho! Here he comes, whoever he is. What? It's the Ringo Kid. That's right, Buck. Hiya, Curly. Ringo. Didn't expect to find the sheriff riding shotgun. I was heading for Lordsburg, same as you, Ringo. Well, my horse went lame, so you got another passenger. I'll take that rifle first, Ringo. That's so, Sheriff. You're under arrest for the murder of Jed Michael. Sorry, Curly, but this Winchester here says different. Sorry, Ringo, but if you look back up the road a piece, you'll see our escort of United States Cavalry coming up. Oh. I'll take that rifle now, Ringo. Sure, Sheriff. But you better hold on to it. You may need it before we get to Lordsburg. Thanks. You can get into the coach now. Much obliged, Sheriff. Get going, Buck. Yep! Sooty! Yep! Nelly! Hiya! So you're the famous Ringo Kid, huh? Friends call me Ringo. Right name's Henry. Hmm, Henry? Why, well, I remember you. Say, I fixed your arm when you was just a little sprout. He was no higher than a quart of bourbon. Well, that was my kid brother broke his arm. You did a good job, too, Doc. Even if you was drunk. Well, thank you, son. How's your brother now? He was murdered. Oh, no. Him and my dad. By the three plumber boys. Well... Good luck when you get to Lordsburg, son. Thanks, Doc. Mrs. Mallory, you're tired. Would you like to rest your head on my shoulder? No, thank you. Mr. Hatfield, would you mind if I sat over on your side of the coach? Not at all, ma'am. Excuse me. Yes, of course. Right here, Mrs. Mallory. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. Hmm. I must have the plague, huh, Dallas? You? Oh, no, it's not you. Have a drink, Hotfield? No, thank you. No, thank you, he says. <laughs> Have a drink, Doc? Yes, thank you. You're not going to move away from me, are you? No, Ringo. Well, I guess I can't expect to break out of prison and into society in the same week. Shh, she'll hear you. Uh, I guess I'm pretty dumb for sitting down beside a lady like you, Dallas. A lady? 
Thanks for not moving. Oh, don't, don't, please. Why are you looking at me like that? Ain't I seen you someplace before? No. No, no, you haven't. Huh. I wish I had, though. I know you. I mean, I know who you are. Uh, I used to be a good cowhand. A few years back, things happened. Yes, things happened. Bottle in a bottle. Drink <laughs> up, Doc. Drink Doc's up. getting a snoot full. Things happen. And now they'll take you back to prison. Not till I finish a job in Lordsburg. Ringo, I... I wish you wouldn't. Wish I wouldn't what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Bottle in a bottle. Oh. Confound that driver. Oh, Why doesn't me. he drive more carefully? He's playing it smart, Hatfield. He took to the mountains. Apaches don't like snow. Well, he might have some consideration for Mrs. Mallory and her condition. Oh, I'll be all right, Mr. Hatfield. Thank you. Bottle, little bottle, bottle. Apache Wells just ahead. Bottle, Apache Wells. Bottle, little bottle. Mr. Hatfield, why didn't my husband and his troops meet us here? The Wrangler tells me that Captain Mallory has been sent ahead to Lordsburg. Lordsburg? Well, we'd better turn around and follow the cavalry escort to Tonto. Oh, we can't do that. With Apaches on the warpath, it ain't safe to go through Apache country without escort. I say we ought to turn back. There's only one way to find out. Take a vote. What do you say, Mrs. Mallory? On to Lordsburg or back to Tonto? I want my husband with me when our baby's born. Doc? Ain't you forgot this, lady? You mean Dallas? Oh, I... I say go. I've nothing to go back to. Doc? Mm, Lordsburg, pass the bottle, pass the bottle. Ringo? Ringo's my prisoner. I'm voting his proxy. I say Lordsburg. Hatfield? I am at the service of Mrs. Mallory. Thank you. Buck? Ah, uh, Lordsburg it is. Well, let's all step inside and get some grub. Look spry. You better take my arm up these steps, Mrs. Mallory. Oh, no, thank you. Really, I'm quite... I... I'm quite... Oh. Mrs. Mallory! She fainted! Oh, I've got her. Dr. Boone! Uh -huh. Mrs. Mallory needs your help. Oh, it's no use. He's drunk. Ringo. Yeah? I, I don't know for sure, but I think you better go inside and start heating some water. All you want, and then some. And then some. Carry her inside, Mr. Hatfield. Oh, allow me. <coughs> allow me. I'll carry her myself, you sot. Thank you, sir. You drunken swine. Thank you. Now, if you'll open the door for me, Dallas. Yes. Drunken swine of a doctor. Doc, honest, ain't you ashamed? Did, did I understand that swine to call me a drunken swine? Oh, I wish I could do something. There is something you can do, Buck. Yeah, but what can you do in your condition? I can drink all of the hot black coffee you can make. I, sir, am a doctor. Now get busy. Get busy. NBC Theater is presenting the Screen Directors Guild production of Stagecoach, starring Claire Trevor, John Wayne, and Ward Bond, with screen director John Ford. Apache Wells, the white man called it. Here the white squaw had her child. While the flying wagon waited, waited while my tribesmen gathered. On the hills and on the desert gathered the Apache warriors. 
While the white squaw had her child and the flying wagon waited. Oh, it makes me nervous being held up like this in Apache country. Just when they're mad at us again. Quiet, Buck. Huh? Someone's coming. Dallas? Look. It's a little girl. A girl? Let me see it. Well, I'll be doggone. That's real fine, ain't it, Dallas? Real fine. Oh, yes, Curly. It's it's fine. A baby? Uh, How? I mean, the... I'll explain it to you sometime, Buck. Listen, boys. Doc Boone. Three cheers for Doc Boone. Never mind the three cheers. Just pour me four fingers instead. I'm thirsty. Dallas? Oh. It's me, Ringo. Oh. You oughtn't to be outside here at night alone. Patsy's like to pick off strays. Well, you're here now. I I watched you with that baby today. You looked... You looked, well, nice. I just wanted to hold it a minute. (laughs) You're visiting in Lordsburg? Uh, I have friends there. Oh, good. Ringo, why don't you escape? I aim to, in Lordsburg. Why not now? Why not go over the border now? My father and brother were shot down by the plumber boys. I guess you don't know how it feels to lose your folks that way. My folks were killed by Indians when I was a kid. Oh, that's tough. It's a hard country, especially for a girl. You have to live no matter what. That's it. Look, Miss Dallas, you got no folks, neither have I. Maybe I'm crazy to ask you, but... Well, I still got a ranch down across the border, and I... Well, I guess I'm crazy being close to you like this, but... Ringo! Ringo! You don't know me. You don't know who I am, or... Or... I know I want to marry you, Dallas. Ringo! That ain't an answer, Dallas. Oh! Ringo, you, you can't go to Lordsburg. Not now. The plumber boys will be three to one against you. You'll get killed. Can't tell. You can't win. Can't run away from it either. How can you talk about our life together when you want to throw your life away? Well, what do you want me to do? Get away. I'll follow you. You mean that, Dallas? Well, I just can't leave Mrs. Mallory and her baby now, but but listen. There's a horse all saddled and ready for you in the corral. What? Yeah, there's a rifle in the saddle boot. Now get going. I'll come after you. I'm counting on that, Dallas, with my life. Goodbye, Ringo. Watch out for Apaches. I got a rifle now, and I got you. Don't worry, Dallas. I'll be waiting. Hold it. Whoa. Hold it. Hold it, boy, easy. Smoke signals on the ridge. Apaches. I gotta warn Dallas and the others. I gotta go back. Yeah! Yeah! On the ridge and on the mesa smoked our Chiricahua fires. Rise, the fires told my nation. Strike the white man's flying wagon. Rise, my kinsmen. Rise, Apaches. Chieftains, horsemen, lances, rifles. Stagecoach on the Lordsburg Trail. Thus the signals on the mesa. Thus the writing in the sky. Thus my fierce Apache horsemen follow on the Lordsburg Trail. Well, 
making good time. I say we're out of danger now, thanks to Ringo here. Very decent of you to come back, Ringo. I wouldn't be too sure we're out of danger yet, Hadfield. We'll be in Lordsburg soon, then. Very soon. How's the baby? Sleeping. Doc told me what you did for me. Thank you very much, Dallas. You know, danger whets my appetite. Indeed it does. Let me see. There must be a bottle of something left in this bag. Look. Oh! A bullet. It just missed your head, Doc. On the floor, Mrs. Mallory. Dallas, you and Mrs. Mallory, get down! Apaches, hundreds of them. Hey! Hey, Ringo! Curly's calling you from the yes, driver's Sheriff. seat, Ringo. Here's your Winchester. Use it, man. Use it. Thanks. Got my rifle. Ringo, look out! That Apache on that painted pony. Got it. See that engine on that Mustang coming alongside? Don't talk. Shoot! Well, now you see him. And now you don't. You ladies all right? We're all right. Now you see him. And now you don't. Baby, all right? Yes, baby, all right. You gentlemen will be good enough to shoot Indians instead of... Hatfield's been hit. Get that Apache. I'll help Hatfield. Got it. Faster. Drive faster. Fire, fire. Can't you see they're all around us? Now, Mrs. Mallory, you'll get hurt. Easy, Hatfield. Easy. I could use some more help up here. Give me your pistol, Doc. Take it. Thanks. Look at all those engines. Apaches all have big families. Don't talk. Shoot. I can't. Out of ammunition. Oh, no. Why have Buck and Curly stopped firing outside? Buck's hit. Curly's empty, too. This looks like it. No. No. I have only three bullets left. That's enough. The Indians won't get you or Mrs. Mallory or the baby. No. No, they won't. Listen. Get out. No, listen. It's a bugle. It's the cavalry from Lordsburg. The Apaches are breaking. They're running away. Glory, glory. How's that feel? Dead. Glory, glory. Well, good night, Ringo. This is... Is this where you live in Lordsburg? I told you. I warned you. I told you you didn't know me. This part of town is no place for a nice girl, but... But it's all right for me. Now say goodbye, Ringo. Say goodbye. I asked you to marry me, didn't I? I'll never forget you asked me. Now go on back and wait for me in the stagecoach. Where are you going? Business for the plumber boys. I'll just take a slow walk down Main Street and see what happens. Dear Lord, this stagecoach don't pass much for a church, but, but I'm praying to you here. Please, Lord. It's three to one against Ringo out there. And the plumber boys are dead shots. <laughs> Awful dead shots, Lord. <laughs> like I was saying, Lord, it's two to one, Lord. <laughs> He's all I got and all I ever want. So please, dear Lord, please let me have him back. Please, please, please. <laughs> to anymore. Before he cashed in, Luke Plummer confessed he killed Jed Michael. You're, you're free? Yeah. And they didn't even hurt you? Dead shots like the Plummer boys? Deadest dead shots you ever saw. Oh, oh Ringo. Ringo. Dallas, what are you crying for? 
Nothing's happened. <laughs> the story of those brave men, riders of the flying wagon, in the land of Arizona, where Geronimo was chief. In the great land in the desert where the flying wagon galloped, that the white men called the stagecoach, bringing brave men to the West. Our stars will return in just a moment. The NBC Theater has presented the Screen Directors Guild production of Stagecoach, starring John Wayne, Claire Trevor, and Ward Bond, and introduced by John Ford. In the weeks to come, the Screen Directors Guild will bring you Douglas Fairbanks, Jr., Robert Montgomery, Rosalind Russell, James Mason, and Irene Dunn. And next week, the NBC Theater presents Screen Director Richard Wallace, Introducing the current film comedy, Let's Live a Little, starring Robert Cummings. And now, here again is our special guest, the president of the Screen Directors Guild, Mr. George Marshall. The premiere production of the Screen Directors' entry into radio has now joined the stagecoach itself in that great fund of memories known as the past. And speaking for the Guild, I'd like to express our gratitude to the National Broadcasting Company for the opportunity to better acquaint the public with the work and role of the screen director. Take it away, John Ford. Well, how do you hardy frontiersmen like pioneering in an NBC <laughs> studio instead of the badlands of Arizona? <laughs> Very much. You know, just the memory of that dust is enough to send me running home to wash my hair. Pappy, this is wonderful. Wayne, wonderful? What do you mean? Well, no getting up early in the morning and arguing with a horse. <laughs> You know, I think it's wonderful that the screen director is being honored like this. He's the fellow who really makes the movie. Claire. As for us actors and actresses, well... well where would we be without you, Pappy, and others like you? That's right. You taught us our business. That's all I can say. Thanks. They're talking about wonderful things. It's a wonder that Pappy here hasn't yet displayed his fine, tyrannical <laughs> hand. How do you do? Is that so? War, John, now look. As long as we're speaking about fine, tyrannical hands, look... Are we going to do this again? Because if so, uh -oh. I'd like to take you folks... Uh -oh. uh -oh. Yeah, I thought so. Huh? You'd have something to say about it. We had that same trouble ten years ago. That's right. Hey, can you, you know, Now, look, John, don't you remember? This is radio. There are no retakes. Good night, everybody. <laughs> our thanks to our stars, John Wayne, Claire Trevor, and Ward Bond. And to screen directors George Marshall and John Ford. Also heard were Barbara Fuller, Peter Leeds, Horace Murphy, Norman Field, Dan Riss, Ken Carson, and Eddie Fields. Tonight's story was adapted by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Production was under the supervision of Howard Wiley. Your announcer, Frank Barton. John Wayne can soon be seen in John Ford's Argosy production, Three Godfathers. And Claire Trevor appears in the soon-to-be-released Amusement Enterprises picture, The Lucky Stiff. Ward Bond is currently appearing in the Victor Fleming production, Joan of Arc. Listen again next week when the NBC Theater presents... Screen Directors Guild Assignment, production Let's Live a Little, director Richard Wallace, star Robert Cummings... Don't miss an hour now of America's favorite music, old tunes, and new hits over most of these stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.